In today's video I show you the anatomy of the two components of the distal biceps tendon on MRI. Most radiologists know that the biceps brachii muscle has two heads, the long head and the short head, and that there are two distinct tendons proximally. So we have the long head of the biceps tendon originating from the glenoid and then going intraarticularly through the bicipital groove and then distally into the muscle belly. And then we have the short head of the biceps tendon originating from the coracoid process. But less is known that these two components are also present distally. So the distal biceps tendon basically has two distinct components and they can rupture separately. And you can see here on this image that we have the short head of the biceps brachii muscles in blue and in green, the long head. Now have a look at the distal biceps tendon here and you can see these two components. We have the short head in blue and the long head in green and the short head is inserting more distally into the radial tuberosity while the long head is inserting more proximally. Before I show you how this looks on MRI, make sure to subscribe to my channel and give the video a like. So this is the first patient and we are here at the level of the elbow. You can see here the biceps muscle and let me make this big. This is a T1 weighted sequence and now this is the myotendinous junction and this is now the tendon forming here. And you can see that we have two distinct components. One medially, one laterally. You can nicely see here, this is just a vein. Now we have these two components here, very nice. This is the Lacertus fibrosus, I will come back to it uh, in a few minutes. And still you can see these two components here. Tuck. Still two tendons, here, here, here and here. This one and this one this one and this one, here is one tendon, this is the other one. And you can see that this one is inserting here, so this is the proximal insertion of the distal biceps tendon and as I have shown you in the initial image that this is now part of the long head of the biceps tendon. And this is the short head or the tendon of the short head and it's inserting far more distally. But still on the radial tuberosity. So we have the radial tuberosity here and we have the proximal insertion here and this one is inserting more distally. This is another patient and just to show you that it's sometimes not so clear that there are two distinct portions and it's really hard to differentiate in this patient. This is a T2 weighted sequence and at this level here you can imagine that there might be two distinct tendons. Then again we have the Lacertus fibrosus here, this structure here and you see basically only one. You might think that there is little indentation here and that it's actually two components but you wouldn't be able to tell if I or if you don't know about it. So this one here looks more like one tendon. In this patient the referring physician already suspected a partially torn distal bicep tendon. Now we can see here we have the muscle here let me make this big and then we have the tendon here and we have some fluid around the tendon and you have here the proximal portion of the long head and here inserting more distally or it would insert more distally the short head and you can see there is discontinuity this one is torn and this one is partially torn so you can see here, but it's easier to see on the transverse sections. Let me make this big here. So starting proximally, we have these two components. So this is the long head and the short head. This is the Lacertus fibrosus, which is intact by the way. And then we have here these two components, some fluid around the tendon, better depicted here on this fat saturated sequence. Now follow this tendon here distally and you can immediately see that there are signal changes and only some 
fibers are inserting into the radial tuberosity here. Let me move back again. So clearly the long head is also partially torn and here we have complete discontinuity here of the short head here, tech, which is completely gone here. You can also see this here on the sagittal view. This one is the long head inserting proximally, which you can kind of see and it's just the signal changes here because it's partially torn and then the it's, it's less easy to see here, but you can see this striation. And here we have a complete rupture of the distal portion of the short head of the distal biceps tendon here, which is not inserting. So we have this gap here. And this one is still inserting. And this one is the gap. Now there are just a few things left to say. If the Lacertus fibrosis is intact, even if the distal bicep tendon is completely torn, you might still have some residual function in the elbow. And also you don't get a lot of retraction of the torn distal bicep tendon, which is nice. And then the distal bicep tendon is far more frequently torn in men than in women and typically affects patients over the age of 40. If you want to know more about the distal bicep tendon, go check the links down in the description. I put a few articles there that are really nice. That's it for today, thanks for watching and see you next time.